In order to create the cutout, we need a bool object. So let's go ahead and add one to the scene. And I'm going to make the arch, the first child, and the cookie cutter, the second child of the bool object. As for the settings of the bool object, we need the boolean type to be A subtract B. We need high quality. If I uncheck that, we will not have access to the options below high quality. And you can see that our mesh is getting really messy. And we certainly don't want that. So let's keep high quality checked. And I also want to create a single object and I want to get rid of all of these edges, so I'm going to hide these. And now we can make the bool object editable, and I'm going to rename this object to arch, and let's delete this null object and these tags. Since the arch is symmetrical, we can also get rid of half of this object. So let's go to point mode and I'm going to delete everything on the right here. Next what I want to do is add an edge loop at the center of this pillar. So in edge mode I'm going to ring select these edges here and use connect points edges to create the edge loop that I want. And one of the reasons I need this edge loop is because later I can split off the left half of this pillar and we can use that for the corners. Now let's take care of this area up here. First of all I want to create the edges that I need for those diagonal grooves here. So I'm going to use the line cut tool and I have single line switched on here and I'm going to make the cuts that I need to create those edges. So make sure you stay parallel to the edges that you see in the reference image. I'll try and do this quickly and you can spend a little more time to get this more accurate. Over here I'm going to cut all the way to the top of the object. We also need an edge loop to be able to extrude that center stone here. And in order to get that edge loop I'm going to snap to this point down here and cut all the way to the top like before. Next I want to reshape the mesh a little bit and I'm going to start by turning some of the geometry into n-gons and maybe let's do that in the perspective view. So for example I'm going to select these polygons here and I'm going to melt them into an n-gon and we can do that over here and here and over here. And now we can go back to point mode and clean everything up a little bit so we don't need these points here. Let's delete these and we're not going to need these points here so let's get rid of those two. We can also simplify the geometry a little bit. For example, we don't really need three points to define this corner here. So let's grab the polygon pen tool and we can weld some of the points here and up here. And here at the top the geometry has to stay the way it is because 
this horizontal groove branches off into this vertical groove but it also continues a little bit further to the edge of the center stone so we have to keep the geometry as it is now what we don't need is these edges here for example so I'm going to select them and dissolve them we also need to create some more edges because we're not just going to model those big grooves we're also going to add those small grooves to the geometry so we need the edges to be able to do that I'm going to use the line cut tool again and I'm going to make a cut from this point down here all the way to the top over here we can select these points and move them over a little bit and line them up with this groove here so now we have pretty much all of the geometry that we need and we can start to remove the engons here and the easiest way to do that is to go to polygon mode I'm going to deselect all the polygons and then we can right click and select remove engons and for the most part this option does what I want there's just two areas that I want to change really and maybe I'm going to reshape some of the geometry a little differently so what we definitely need to change is this area over here because we're going to get rid of this center edge we can't really connect the point down here to this point so we have to find a different solution for that and I don't really like the geometry over here so I'm going to change that as well in point mode I'm going to select these two points here and connect them and I'm going to dissolve this edge here and we could also reshape this a little bit and there's no fixed rules for doing this what I'm showing you is just my preferred way of doing meshes like this for example I don't really like engons however it's okay to have triangles on a hard surface model like this in my opinion the only thing that you should avoid is keeping quads at all costs because that would create too many polygons other than that you can do pretty much anything you want and usually I don't go for the lowest polygon count I go for a nice and clean looking mesh so what we could change is we could select these polygons turn them back into an engon and we also have to melt these ones here and we could get rid of these edges by dissolving them and let's go to point mode what I'm going to do is connect the points down here to this point and sometimes when you connect points like this you have to be careful for some reason if I zoom in to this area down here you can see we have this additional edge down here and I'm not sure why that happens in order to avoid that what we can do is select fewer points and try to connect those and that seems to work fine and then we can connect these two points and over here I'm going to use the line cut tool and I'll make a cut from this point straight up all the way to the top of the object so that's one way of creating the mesh on an object like this and now we're ready to extrude this two-dimensional geometry into a three-dimensional object so let's go to polygon mode I'm going to select all of the polygons here and then use extrude make sure you have create caps switched on and I'm going to extrude these polygons back now you can see we're having a bit of a problem in two areas here so maybe this happens when you do this maybe it doesn't the reason why this happens is the bool object so at some point the bool object created a problem that we didn't see when we used it and I'm not sure why it happens sometimes and why sometimes it doesn't it's not a big deal though we can easily fix that 
let's go back a step all we need to do is select the polygons in the areas where the problem occurs and delete those polygons and when we do that you can see that we still have edges here so what we can do is select these edges and delete them now we can select these two edges here and these two down here and use quick extrude and then we can switch on snapping and snap to these edges over here and because the new geometry that we just created is not connected to the rest we also have to optimize the object I'm going to do this in point mode so you can see things change now we have 108 points right now make sure you select all the points or deselect all the points to make sure that optimize will work so I'm going to deselect everything and then we can right click and use optimize and you can see the point count has now been reduced to 104 points and everything should be connected properly so now we can go back to polygon mode and if I select all the polygons and use extrude again we shouldn't have that problem anymore I'm going to extrude these polygons back maybe maybe 80 centimeters so you can do whatever you think looks good here I think 80 will work for me and because we have extruded these polygons back with caps we also have to check the polygon normals in this case the polygons are facing inside out so I'm going to select all the polygons and just reverse the normals to fix that issue so now we're ready to extrude all the details and I'm going to start here at the bottom with this bottom stone if you take a look at the reference image you can see that the bottom stone here seems to be a little bit wider and deeper than the rest of the stones so what I'm going to do is use the ring selection tool to select these polygons down here and I'm going to extrude these without caps and I'll do maybe five centimeters looks fine and now we can use the ring selection tool again and select all of the grooves so all of the polygons here and here and the ones up here and we have to deselect a couple so you can see all the polygons that we need to extrude here and I'm going to extrude these back a little bit maybe maybe about three centimeters and I think that looks pretty good we can also extrude the center stone and I'm going to do that starting in the front view I'm grabbing my rectangle selection tool and I want to switch on tolerance selection here so I can grab the polygons that I need just by dragging a rectangle over these we don't really need the polygons at the bottom because you can see the center stone is flush with the arch so we don't need these down here we only need the polygons at the front and at the back and I'm going to extrude these out a bit maybe let's do 10 centimeters and let's see how that looks and you can see we're getting somewhere this is looking pretty nice in the next video we're going to finish modeling this half of the arch by adding the smaller grooves